in this video we will see what the direction and magnitude of the force between two parallel current carrying conductors will be so we have two cases in the first case we have two parallel wires carrying current in the same direction and in the second case we have parallel wires carrying current in opposite directions so let us first see what the direction of the force will be like in both of these two cases starting with case one let us name the two wires a and b and for now let us consider that wire b is not here right now we only have wire a carrying current in the upward direction now since wire a is carrying current it will generate its own magnetic field and the direction of its magnetic field is given by right hand thumb rule so the direction of the magnetic field at a point say p lying on this line b due to current flowing through wire a using right hand thumb rule is going into the plane of the paper now in this magnetic field which is directed into the plane of the paper we are placing another current carrying conductor b and we already know that whenever we have a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field it experiences a force now the direction of the force experienced by a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field is given by fleming's left hand rule according to fleming's left hand rule if the forefinger of our left hand points in the direction of the magnetic field the middle finger points in the direction of the current then the thumb will point in the direction of the force acting so the magnetic field is into the plane of the paper the current flowing is in the upward direction then the thumb points in the direction of the force acting so to say the current carrying wire b in the magnetic field of a experiences a force which is directed towards the conductor a itself so we see that the current carrying wire b experiences a force in this direction now let us change this very scenario by considering that the current carrying wire b is here but current carrying wire a is not here since current through wire b is flowing in the upward direction the direction of the magnetic field generated due to this current flowing through wire b at point q according to right hand thumb rule will be in the upward direction at point q as you can see so in this magnetic field which is coming out of the plane of the paper we are placing conductor a carrying current in the upward direction so considering points lying on wire a the magnetic field is coming out of the plane of the paper the current is flowing in the upper direction so the thumb gives the direction of the force which is directed towards wire b therefore we see that two current carrying wires carrying current in the same direction they experience a force which is directed towards each other that is they are attracted towards each other now use fleming's left hand rule in this second case also that is in the case of two parallel wires a and b carrying current in opposite directions and you will see that these two wires they experience a force in opposite directions that is these two parallel wires carrying current in opposite directions they will repel each other so don't forget two parallel wires carrying current in the same direction they attract each other whereas two parallel wires carrying current in opposite directions they will repel each other now let I1 be the current flowing through wire A and I2 be the current flowing through wire B. Also let R, small r, be the separation between the two wires. Although it's not shown in the picture, let us consider R to be the separation between the two wires. Therefore, if B1 be the magnetic field at any point on the wire B, at any point on the wire B, due to current i1 flowing through wire a then b1 is given by mu naught i1 upon 2 pi r we get this from ampere circuit law or from bart and savart's law in which case we have seen that the magnetic field due to a straight current carrying wire is equal to mu naught i by 2 pi r and we see that in both case 1 and case 2 this magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the paper and going inwards therefore the force experienced by l length of the wire b carrying current i2 of course and placed in the magnetic field b1 is given by f which is i2 
into L into B1 because we have a current I2 carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field B1. So which is equal to I2 L B1 sin 90 degrees because current and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. Thereby we get F is I2 L into mu naught I1 by 2 pi R. Thereby we get F is equal to mu naught upon 2 pi I1 I2 L upon R. So the force per unit length of the wire B or if you are working in SI, the force per meter of the wire B is F upon L which is mu naught upon 2 pi I1 I2 by R. So this is the force per unit length of force per unit meter of current I2 carrying wire B placed in the magnetic field B1 of wire A. Now according to Newton's third law of motion, this wire A also experiences the same magnitude of force as it is carrying current I1 and it is placed in the magnetic field of wire B. Finally, in this expression, when we put I1 is equal to I2, which is equal to I, then this expression becomes F upon L is equal to mu naught by 2 pi I squared by R. Now, say I is equal to 1 ampere, R is equal to 1 meter, then we see from this expression that F upon L comes out to be 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 Newton per meter. So from here, we get our definition of ampere. Therefore, we see from here that 1 ampere is defined to be the current which when flowing through two parallel wires placed 1 meter apart produces a force of 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 Newton per meter of the wires.